Hello and welcome to Fulham Fix, just on the eve of a couple of days after Fulham nicked a one all draw at Brighton, would that be fair to say, Ivan? How much were you there? Do you watch any of it? I did, I watched the whole game. I I nicked. I don't know if that's the right word. I think there's that a unfair? point where I felt like in the second half, especially, we were going to go on to win it. We looked the better team. I mean, let's really? put the Brighton manager's um, bitter statement oh. after the game. Uh, yeah, go on. To one what side. What did he say? What did oh, he say? Man, he said there was only one team playing that game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gave it the, the, the big I am that they, they, you know, Brighton were robbed and, and all of that sort of stuff. But no, I think in reality, they, <coughs> they were fantastic in the first half. They were definitely the stronger team. And it was one of those moments where you thought, oh, if we can just get to half time without yeah. being, say, two down, with, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and kind of like, yeah get you know get a get a decent team talk in and and go again which is what we did and then the second half I'd say probably for the best part of half an hour it was all us we really we looked really strong and then I would say towards the end again Brighton sort of fighting back quite a bit but I I would I would say one all fair result again if you were to go onto Brighton's uh Twitter uh, amongst Mm. the fans uh they don't think that no but you know, well, we I'll tell you who else doesn't think that the um, the highlights package whoever puts those together a match for day two, because I watched that and that did give you the impression that Fulham didn't really have the ball <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> but, yeah, pretty much mm. until until the second half. Um, well, first I, I, question. Yeah, I think that's first question I got for you. Half, uh, yeah. I've got a surface level um, question for you first up. What do you make of Fulham in pink? So. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's out there. It's, it, I mean, it's it's not like a subtle pink. It's not a pastel pink or a salmon pink, is it? It is, you know. Hey, listen. No, it's bright. How are, how pink. how are your retinas? Let's 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 you know. Do we have a history? I don't know if we've got a history of pink because obviously Fulham's away kits in the, historically were red, mm. red and black, and obviously there's some some great yellow ones as well. But I don't know. Do we have we had any history of pink? Have we just decided this year we're going to play away in pink. And, and yeah, and I think it works. I think it looked very, very cool. But no, I don't think we do I agree. Have I remember, do you remember Orangey? We went through a period um, of orange. Uh, not yeah. long. That was Martin Yole era. Yeah. And uh, that was very cool. I like the orange look. Um, I like us in pink. It reminded me of um, old older music fans will know that the, um, the Clash used to paint all of their flight cases and stuff bright pink. Oh, really? So occasionally, so it was like a real like statement of intent to have all your gear going with the Clash written in pink. And sometimes bands copy it, but it's hard to copy it because it's like, oh, you're just doing a Clash thing. But that's what we sort of reminded me of in that fluorescent pink. It was like a sort of reverse statement of intent. And especially seeing a team that are so resilient and tough. Mm. And as Danny Murphy said on Match of the Day, tenacious, Mm. wearing bright pink. Yeah. It was quite sort of like visually arresting. I was quite into it. Yeah. And also, you, I mean, you, you mentioned The Clash, but and we obviously have such an affiliation as a club with The Clash, you know. Yeah. London's calling down by the river. You know, I wonder if whoever was Is there the design, a connection there? You know what I mean? Thought that. Do, do you know what? After we do this, I'll send you some of those flight cases because they're beautiful and full of, even if it's accidentally, we are an image of them at the moment. And we're sort of playing like The Clash a little bit, um, especially Polinia, who... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, man, he was unbelievable. I thought just yeah. just even in the highlights, nailing people. You mentioned the Brighton socials. Um, my, because you know how Twitter now it gives you or X, it gives you stuff people you don't follow. Yeah. Based on an algorithm. Yeah. I was just basically getting stuff from Brighton fans saying um, how many times Pelini should have got sent off, or especially for that one mm. thing. But I've seen it a few times. I don't know. I think he just wins the ball like he always wins the ball, sort of. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, <laughs> I don't think it was uh, maybe a yellow at best, but I don't think there was any real, like, malicious intent or anything. And I don't, like, you know, yeah. with regards to the, the one possible moment and the fact it was, you know, seen by the ref and checked by VAR, you know, I, I don't really think there was much more to it. I, I think if he'd got a yellow, you'd go, all right, maybe fair enough. But beyond that, but yeah, I mean, he was he was totally a man possessed. Um, which hey, he, he is, he ha- unbelievably nails, man. Yeah, he has been for a while. A kind of yeah, yeah, a sort of he's got the kind of fire in his eyes, and and um, 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's kind of unbelievable. I feel like, I don't know. It's like he's every game currently he's got a big point to prove or something. Well, exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's an interesting storyline developing because he it we felt like after the Bayern Munich stuff, would it or wouldn't it? But he came back slightly melancholic mm. or kind of like, you know, sort of half, half reluctant. But actually, now he's triggered in. It's just like we've got this world level player of a point to prove every week and just nailing people. I, I can't think of a footballer, but I love watching more than Polinia. Mm. And another one I will say also, and they look like a f- ultimate pairing, is a Wobi. I know we mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, but he's such a presence of Wobi and so yeah. much energy. And them two together, I mean, they, I, they feel quite iconic to me in a fuller midfield, yeah. a Wobi and Polinia. It's got it's got a strong look, hasn't it? Like a real kind of you know. It's physically, you know what I mean. It's really kind of um, what's the word? I was going to say impulsive. Like you're just a huge Mm. presence, isn't it? Do you know what you've just like you've conjured up in my head just then uh, when you when you talk about that? Are you a Lord of the Rings fan at all? The movies. I I've never I've 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 watched them about twelve times more than I care to, and I still don't know what's going on. (laughs) But Sorry, so do you know that up. bit in, in the first film where they're rowing towards? I mean, again, I'm the same. I've watched it so many times, but if you were to ask me specific moments and places, I couldn't. But there's a bit Go where on. they're rowing uh, towards the mountain area, right? And there's yeah. there's these two big stone giants that they have to like row between, like huge, and they're both like there with their hands up, and it feels like that. <laughs> and they're Wobie and Polinia. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that. I love that. I'm going with that. They do. They 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 look like they're a few foot taller than everybody else. Mm. Yeah, definitely. they've really got that energy to them. Yeah. I'd love to see them on uh, United at the weekend because I think they're going to give United some problems. You know. Yeah, I. Do you know what? I agree. I think United not perhaps in the strongest place. I always get a bit scared about saying too much because I don't want to jinx anything. But we've got a history of jinxing stuff. So, in yeah. for a penny, in for a pound. But I, yeah, I think that that this weekend's game against United is is could be. A really feisty one. I think I think we're going to be up for it, you know, really sort of chomping at the bit, you know. Absolutely, man. Um, before we move on and introduce our guests, uh, one final shout out for the beautiful image of all the Fulham fans celebrating in the rain. Nothing better than a smash and grab point in the Premier League in the pouring rain and just seeing that euphoria hmm. in the away end when Polina scores that goal. It was a really beautiful sight. I don't, I don't know if I obviously wasn't there, but if you get in touch with us, tell us how ecstatic that feels because that, that's there's nothing better than a way you go is there especially when you've been under the pump a little bit yeah agreed yeah definitely and you know especially a player like Polina you know who celebrated so hard as well that, yeah you know that face man it's everything you want to see in a player and yeah it was mad to watch mate like you said it, it, it was beautiful Come on. And Robinson off the line, who's having another great season at fullback, which is a lovely segue to our next guest because there is no uh, there is no greater cult fullback at the Fulham Football Club. And I mean cult properly. Sometimes we band it around. But there is no greater cult fullback hero at the club than John Pansil. No. And I mean, in the off-season... There really isn't. There can't be. There isn't. I mean, Olympique, Brevet, you know, Herrera, there's some names on there, but Johnny Pantsel really is the guy that we think of as a cult personality at Fulham. Um, so we spoke to him in his home in Ghana, Ivan. Yep. It was chaotic yeah. conversation. Um, tell, tell me something. I mean, <laughs> takeaways from it. We had it. We had it all planned as we as we always do. We had the time and everything. Yeah. I mean, you know, the one thing that Jeff. Uh, who was arranging it with him was saying it is his birthday and we're like are we sure he he wants to do it on his birthday is he not so have nice other things so going nice. on maybe a few distractions yep. um yep. you know apparently not so we waited and and uh you know the time came and went <laughs> i think a few what, times we were supposed to meet him yeah yeah and uh we did eventually get hold of him didn't we sort of briefly on the phone he half kind of had forgotten i think it's fair to say he probably actually totally forgotten um, but he was up for doing it. And I seem mm-hmm. to remember he said, you know, give me a second. And that mm-hmm. was quite a long period of time in itself. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was a long second, has, yeah. he, has he just done a runner? Like, has he gone, oh, I've forgotten yeah. and said, oh, you know. And then I think what he said was that um, it's raining at the moment in Ghana. 
and because of that the internet drops out when it rains yeah we're so, like okay mate and just say if you don't want to do it on your birthday yeah john you don't have to lie to us like that and then we did google and it was indeed uh raining wasn't it in ghana it was raining in ghana which makes it sound so, like we didn't trust him but like on our birthdays yeah. would we be doing that don't get me wrong i just think you know I think maybe he had just like forgotten. Well, it begs the question: Does does rain affect internet? I didn't realize rain affected internet. Maybe in Ghana it does. Maybe in Ghana it does. But you know, he <laughs> he, he then he did eventually join us. Maybe you know, a couple of hours late was it? Let's just say it was a it was a couple of hours late and sort of unprepared for any sort of conversation. But mm. um, in his living room, so we do get a kind of natural, slightly psychedelic conversation mm. uh, with Johnny Pantsil. Uh, which we still get some key stories out of it. My favourite bit really is um, when we end up inevitably talking about the Europa League run. Mm. And then, and while we bring that up, you identify the moment when you hear it in a second. But he, he um, quite literally just turns his back on the camera and then just starts rummaging around in the corner of his room. And I did not know what he was going to pull out of a corner of that room. No. And he comes back with um, his Europa League final medal, like mm. pr proudly sort of like swinging it back and forth in front of the camera. So um, it's kind of everything you want from a chat with John Pansil, really. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't really <laughs> add much more to that because it was an experience and it was, yep. yeah, it was, it was as much about the internet as it was John Pansil, but it was beautiful in every sense. And it was so lovely seeing him just straight away. Like, you're like, Big oh, grin. there he is, man. Would yeah, legend. Yeah, what uh, legend. Picturing him doing, picturing him doing the um, lap of honor. But of and before, yeah. before we throw to it, finally, I will say that um, I've just said it before we gone on, on air. But um, my favourite moment of the year is when he's an hour late for that call, that Zoom chat, and we've been waiting for an hour. And Jeff, who we, we name check Jeff on this podcast uh, more than Mark Maunders actually. But um, Jeff phones it up to see where he is, and he goes, "Oh, Jeff, good to hear from you. How's your family?" <laughs> and I, Jeff's, Jeff Jeff's Jeff never going, met him. Yeah. Wasn't working at the club Family. when he was there. And it's just family. Good John. Um, do you remember? That thing? <laughs> anyway, let's throw to it because he's a legend. He is. Here he is. Welcome to Fulham Fix, all the way from Ghana, from his home in Ghana on his birthday. Yeah. John Pansil, how you doing, John? I'm doing well. Thank you very much, mate, and yourselves. Oh man, we're really good Very and good. we're so happy to be speaking to you, John, because we've been doing Fulham Fix for for a while now. And when we had a list at the start of the Fulham legends, the cult heroes that we wanted to talk to at the club, your name was one of those people like, first on the list. So it's so nice that we finally get to chat to you, man. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. I'm grateful. So John's just showed us, for all Fulham fans listening, uh, there's a photo in his house still in Ghana, and this will be very familiar to all people that used to watch Fulham in the last 20 years, where John is stood before the game starts with both arms aloft and his head down at Craven Cottage. That's such an iconic shot, and we remember so well. John, do you think, do you like remember really fondly about your time at Fulham? Oh, yes, uh, I had a really good time uh, at Fulham, um, especially the, the fans. I mean, I've been their favorite to the fans most of the time and still keep in touch with the, most of the fans. And, you know, Fulham fans are amazing. The club is amazing, good family. And I mean, it's the club that I find my feet. All my career, everywhere I go, is Fulham that uh, brought with the line lamp for people to see what I'm capable of doing. So I always call Fulham as my second home, uh, side Ghana. And, I'm always happy to to go back to England to watch Fulham playing. So yeah, I had a wonderful and beautiful time. I had a great teammates uh, who respect each other, who worked so hard. We had a fantastic manager, Roy Hoxton and Stegenkamp men. And then we also have uh, Darren Preston and his uh, and his uh, management members who make things happen. Do you um you famously once said John that the Fulham team you played for like the Galacticos but with smaller names it was a really special team wasn't it? It was a special team. I mean, uh, yeah, indeed, I can say it was a Galacticos. Uh, is a team that has a more of leaderships, quality team uh, players who are capable of captain captains from different teams. Um, look at uh, Danny Murphy. If you look at the Dava, 
Debbie Daffa, you look at uh, Bakshuokta, and uh, myself, uh, Hangeland, uh, so many players who were like leaders uh, by, by no mistake. They were, they, were great, they were great people, great players who always know what they want. Paul Koncheski was there with great experience, Andy Johnson. And yeah. if you look at all these players, they were, they were amazing, amazing. So, and I mean, you can't even take one. Clint Dempsey from USA, he was a captain for US. And I think uh, Roy did so well to put uh, such uh, Galacticos together. Um, young Galacticos that uh, proved the whole world that uh, we a couple of uh, winning. And we also have a great supporters, the fans who follow us everywhere, home and away. Are you still in touch with, you mentioned some incredible players there, um, some, you know, real legends in the eyes of Fulham fans. Uh, any players that you're in touch with a lot? Do you, do, you, do you, are you constantly on the phone to them? Do you message them lots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, most of them, most of them. Yeah, we are all on Instagram. Uh, sometimes I see Bobby Zamora holding fish. I will comment on the, on the comment session. I see yeah. Paul Konczewski uh, doing very well with, the, with West Ham ladies and also comment. And yeah, sometimes see uh, uh, Diga. Diga too is doing very, very mm -hmm. well. And I, I always uh, uh, commend them. And Dixon Netuhu, a great midfielder who do always do box to box. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we are, we are, we are, we are in touch. Um, Brother Hangeland is doing so well. I yeah. also comment on his session and Max Schwarter at the same time. So yeah, I mean, most of them, I'm in touch with most of them. John, you had, um, like we talk about it quite a lot, but you had a, a, especially a special relationship with Roy Hodgson, didn't you? I mean, I, in the past you spoke to, about him like a, almost like a father figure. Did, did he bring you to Fulham Football Club? He signed you? Yeah, it was uh, Roy who brought me to Fulham and he gave me the opportunity. He has so much belief in me. He respects me so much. And he also respects uh, my career at that time because he believed that uh, John was untouchable and how he always do what he wants uh, on, the, on the field. And I would say that I've worked uh, under a lot of uh, managers, but Roy is a different class. I mean, mm -hmm. A coach who who saw me, who makes sure that people will see what is inside me, and he brought the best out of me. Uh, I mean, aside all the coaches that I work with, it was Roy who brought the best out of me. That's really lovely to hear. Have you been surprised by because he's obviously gone on since then to do amazing things as well? You always sort of watching on proudly with Roy, but he's still managing. It's incredible, right? Ah, uh, I mean, he's amazing. Uh, you know, Roy is the top, top, top professional. I mean, if you look at his age, he can still kick the ball with his, his left. The technique is still there. Yeah. And if you're a player and you are working under this manager and you see him touching the ball so well, he tells you the player that uh, you are not in the place that you can joke. I mean, yeah. if the manager like Roy is carrying the ball to you in technique side with skills, he tells you the player that you need to stand up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Roy is a, is a manager and he's a coach and he's a teacher. So, you know, he has all this in one. And when you're under this manager, I think you, the player, your best will come out uh, automatically. One thing you're really renowned for, John, and during that period of time is, I think you'll know what I'm about to say, but the um, lap of honour mm. at the end of games. People still talk about the John Pantsall lap of honour. When did that start did you first do that before you came to Craven Cottage a lap of honor or was it was it something um particular with Fulham it started with Fulham because um uh, the supporters were amazing I mean uh, I'm somebody a little taste gets to me and you know when people appreciate what you do you also have to appreciate them I mean they will come to the field with their numbers and they will cheer us up whether the game is going good or bad, they will still believe in us. So I feel like the day I started that uh, lap of honor and I continued until I left uh, Covid Cottage, it was amazing. I think the fans deserve it. Even if now, anytime I see them, I will still give it to the fans. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So good. Is it now? There's a there's a rumor. You can tell us if this is uh, this is true or not. That you're we obviously know you as Pencil, but there's a. a a rumor, a rumor that your name is actually Paintsill. Um, but when you first joined the Premier League and they registered you, 
they made a spelling error, missing out one of the letters, so it was pronounced pencil, and you you just stuck with it. Is that right, or is that just a, a myth? Yeah, it's pencil, P-A-I-N-T-S-I-L, pencil. But I think there was a mistake at the passport office, which they left the I, which myself, I didn't notice. So <laughs> <laughs> I was using it all this while until um, I signed for West Ham United. Then the, the pencil name uh, came up. So I was uh, quite surprised, like, call me pencil, pants, pants. And I said, ah, no, my name is not like that. Until we, we find out from the, from the passport, like the registration name. And then I said, oh, right. Then I'll stick to it until then. John, there were so many amazing games you were involved in at Fulham, but one that really um, sticks in the memory of your time is against Chelsea when you had like Drogba's number. Do you remember this game? And then you got substituted and Drogba scored as soon as you were substituted. Do you remember, do you remember this game? I remember. I think uh, it was a away game at uh, Chelsea home. Um, right, yeah. I was uh, December... Uh, no, 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 that was almost, yeah, end of December 2010. And I think I, I had a crash with Drogba. There was a corner kick that came and I kicked the ball from the box. Drogba hit my knee by mistake. He was trying to also balloon the ball. But that injury happened in the first half, but I thought I could continue with it. And but second half, I saw that I could not do it anymore. I was doing, I was doing well with, with them, very, very well. And I was on top of my game. But the, the injury distracts me from it because it was a, a new problem. And if I could uh, continue at that time, it would have resulted in a lot of damage in my knee. That is why I had uh, opportunity from playing uh, for Ghana and Angola 2010 Nations Cup. Um, another uh, a player that um, you had a, a, a bit of a, a run in with and certainly uh, I think feared you famously. Peter Crouch. Um, I don't know if you uh, have listened to him on a podcast describe uh, you in a game. He, I think he was um, terrified of you. Do you remember this? <laughs> yeah, I think it was this game against uh, Tottenham versus Fulham. And Peter Crouch gave me the, his elbow. And then I approached him, but uh, he, he said something bad to me, which was not all right. So I was a bit uh, angry. So I told him I'm going to send him off. I'm going to I'm going to break his legs because uh, he's not listening. He's being stubborn. So he thought I was joking. <laughs> he left my side to run to Paul Konchesky's side. I went there to give it to him and then return back to my position. Um, he told me that uh, I'm a defender who is making a lot of mistakes and I always cause the team. And, and I told him, you don't know me, so you don't say that to me. He's trying to get in your head. He's trying to get in your head, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was trying to get into my head, but he felt me very well. That's why he ran away, because I heard him asking uh, Aaron Hughes that, this guy said you break my leg, what do you think? And then he told me that, that guy don't go there. John <laughs> <finished>. <laughs> so the ball came and then he ran from my side and I followed him. He didn't, he didn't see me coming. So <laughs> immediately he got the ball. I, I gave him tucking from behind. <laughs> and then the, the referee came and then he, he just uh, said, it's okay, we, we should calm down uh, with each other. Yeah, but um, Peter Crouch was one of the greatest strikers I've ever uh, met. He's very sharp and he's very, very intelligent. So if you are a defender, you're not smart, Peter Crouch will, will work on you. But yeah, I was very strong and then I stood up my feet and I think he also felt the heat. Joe, were you always a uh, defender? Were you a natural defender or when you were younger did you used to play in more forward positions? Yeah, I was a second striker as number 10 oh, right. uh, when I used to play for school and joining Breco Masters, play from third division to premier. I was I was a four line scoring goals. Yeah, so... <laughs> In 2000 and 2001, uh, a national team under 20 coach changed my position to become as a right back because uh, he really wanted to give me an opportunity because I was playing for a first division team when I was competing with uh, players who were playing for premier side for the under 20 national team. So he gave me the opportunity and then I never looked back. 
so obviously you're at Fulham for a few years. What are the particular moments that 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 sort of stick to you that you take away now that that you know you still think of to this day? Yeah, I'm very proud of it. I mean, one thing I can always uh, be happy with it is my trophy here and with my medal. Oh, what's he getting now? Yeah, no worries, man. This is the final. For the benefit of listeners, we're watching John move to the back of his room behind his Fulham poster, and he's looking for something. What have we got? Hey. What medal's this? This is it. The Europa. The Europa final, oh. man. 2019, it was the amazing season for Fulham. And I think all my career is the best moment when Poham reached the final mm. as a Europa Cup uh, second runners. So we had a fantastic, fantastic season 2008, and then we continue our good form to 20, 2009. Yeah. And we end up playing against Atletico Madrid in Germany. So it's one of my best, and it's gonna stay with me for. The rest of my life. <laughs> oh, do you know what? That's so lovely that you see it that way as well. Like, because obviously it's you know we we've chatted recently to um to Danny Murphy. We spoke to um uh, quite recently, and uh, and he he's only just got round to watching it and struggles to watch it and, and finds it sort of frustrating to watch back because obviously we didn't win in the end. But for me and for a lot of fans, it's such a big moment that we just made it to the final, winning it almost didn't matter because we'd proved we could get to a final. And it's really lovely that you you hold the memory of us just making it to the final in such such high regard, you know? Exactly. I think we were not we were not far from winning the trophy. Uh, we were unlucky at some point. And you know, we were underdog when we started the Europa uh, campaign. Nobody trusts and believed that we will reach the final. Like I said, we we're talking about the experience that we have among us. It's good you did mention uh, Danny Murphy, Captain Fantastic. I salute him. He's the, <laughs> great, he's the greatest uh, ever uh, leader. He's a great leader. I mean, Danny Murphy is a very nice guy. He will talk to you with respect. You know, he talked to all his team members. He knows that he's the leader and we have to work hard. And when you see your captain working hard, definitely you also do the same. Mm-hmm. And he was a fighter. He don't give up and all. So, yeah. We did, we did so well. Like Danny, that's why he said he can't even watch the game properly because he know how that game meant to all of us. Mm. And it was a difficult one uh, for letting it go to Atletico Madrid. But mm. then Atletico Madrid was more experienced in such tournament. And we being the first to target them like that, we were lucky to, mm. to get uh, the trophy away. So, yeah. John, I'm, um, I think we're both mindful it's your birthday and you spared this time for yeah, us. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're not going to keep you any longer on your birthday, but on behalf of all Fulham fans and us, everyone at Fulham Fix, thank you for uh, some amazing years at the club, man. Yeah, we man. Really, really appreciate you joining us. And anytime, you're always welcome to Craven Cottage for more laps of honour. Thank you very much. Hopefully next season, you will see John Pansel at the Craven Cottage. John Pansel there. I mean, on his it, birthday, on his birthday, the birthday boy, John Pansel. It was, it was so lovely. It was just, it was an experience, man. It was lovely. It was so great to his, uh, see his face. He's such an icon at Fulham. And yeah, some, big grin. You know, and although it was, you know, there's the challenges that obviously um, Zoom can sometimes pose, and especially Zoom with bad Wi-Fi and delays and and rain. In the Ghanaian rain, yeah, yeah. Then uh, you know. But he still managed to tell some 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 pretty pretty cool stories, like the Peter Crouch one, especially. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, definitely the Crouch Crouch one. Well, the Crouch one's intense, isn't it? Because mm. he doesn't he, doesn't he say he's going to break his legs? Yeah, and I don't know if that's maybe lost in translation a little bit, or literally <laughs> he wanted to. I, is he saying it, break a leg, or is he saying break his legs? I, I well, I definitely don't unclear. think he meant break a legs in good luck. No, I don't think New, he meant that. But I think but... Uh, the, the important <laughs> thing is he didn't break his legs. And yes, all was good. <laughs> That's what we need to remember, okay? Yeah. The, uh, but the, the common thread, really, of like everyone we speak to um, about Fulham, all these legends, is they've all, wherever they are in the world now, got such love 
for Fulham Football Club. Mm. And that's always the heartening thing, isn't it? But it's for all these people, it's a real home from home. Mm. Um, and it always will be for Johnny Pansil. Yeah, agreed. It definitely. And, you know, the fact that he's willing to do it on his birthday just sort of shows exactly the love he has. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what a hero. What a great guy. Legend. Hey, listen, before uh, before we sort of uh, wind down, James kindly uh, reminded me what I was actually talking about in that Lord of the Rings reference. Um, oh, yeah. The, the place is called Argonath. So they're, they're, right. they're kind of rowing into Argonath. And I'm going to show you the image that I had in my mind when you were talking about Polinia and Iwobi in the midfield. And I want, you, I want to show you the image and I want to get your live reaction Oh, wow, that's not the image, but I thought that is much... Yeah. And they're sailing through. You can see how small they are at the bottom, the boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Brighton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. That's what, that's what you, you yeah. had me conjure up. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that's... Um, it's not exactly what I had in mind when I said playing in bright pink and it looked like presence is. You've definitely overstated that in your head. Mm. But um, that is more testament to your imagination than anything else, Ivan. So I think, you know what, that's a good one. What Ful Fulham players as, current Fulham players as film, as characters in films. Do you know what? Uh, maybe it's not just me that will do the thinking over the next week. I think we might be onto something here. So you're, you're saying that Polina and Wobi look like these statues in Lord of the Rings. Mm. Let's try and complete that Fulham eleven. So if you, if in this current Fulham 11, any of the players remind you of characters, statues, ornaments, props from films, please get in touch and tell us who and what that is. Mm. And we're going to collate this Fulham 11 together, all right? I'm excited. Sound good? I'm excited. That sounds very, very good. Come on, Fulham. I think it's, uh, it's worth just ending as well on a bit of wonderful news as well um, for the Fulham fans to hear, especially as we go oh, yeah. into you know, uh, the busy winter period of games is that uh, the one and only, one of our finest managers in, in, in years, Marcus Silva, has signed a new deal. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, do you know what? That's that's fitting as well because we were just talking about Pantsil and Hodgson and the affinity connection they had. And it's very clear that Silva has a similar sort of connection with his players. And fair play to Marco because we know that other people were interested in him in the off-season and we know nothing about it. There was moments when it felt like, oh, are we going to keep hold of him? And it's so important that we do. So the fact that he's committed to the club is a really beautiful thing. And he is stitching into the DNA of his team a resilience that we haven't seen for a while. You, they're constantly getting written off, whether it's in micro moments in games mm. or in patterns of the season. And they always find a way to answer their problems. So we love Marco for that. We do. And... Um, we, we're going to get him on this one day, but he's just busy managing Fulham Football Club at the moment. Yeah, he's not finding the time. We'll we'll, we'll get him on and uh, I, I can't wait for that. And uh, yeah, to, to Marcus Silva and to uh, hopefully, let's say honest, a, a fantastic game against Man United this weekend. Come on, Fulham, we deserve something against United, don't we? We definitely do. There's, there's... And we get him at a good time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a great one. And uh, yeah. Fingers crossed we are celebrating something after that game. We'll see. 